For all your NRG innovation product needs, make sure you check out driveenergy.com. That's D R I V E N R G dot com. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Evil Rabbit here on Forza Horizon 4. So we get a lot of people asking me recently on the channel for tips and tricks on drifting here in Forza Horizon 4. So I figured I would do basically a little bit of a tutorial session on the basics of trying to get the car to be stable and transition. For that purpose, we are in this, uh, you know, little figure eight parking lot on the map. I will show you guys exactly where it is if you don't know where it is. And for the purpose for cars today, we are rocking a, basically it's 399 horsepower, stock tires, um, drift suspension, 350Z wide body. I will show the, uh, basically the exact uh, suspension settings and everything I have as well as I will leave this tune up if you guys want to give it a try. So we're going to go through some of the basic things that I found helped when I first started getting on the wheel and, uh, you know, being able to control it from preventing from spitting out, from it over oscillating and rotating under transition or not being able to transition. You know, some basic things to start off with on a wheel to try and, you know, get more comfortable with it and stuff like that. So, like I said, for the purpose of this, we are going to get out of drone mode and uh, show you where we are on the map. We are the top left corner of the map up here, right above where the... Uh, game stuff is right actually uh up the street from my uh, lake lodge house so it is in this parking lot area right here so that's for the purpose we're going to be doing that starting here today so like i said this is a very basic tune like about 400 horsepower 350z wide body like i said i'm gonna leave the tune up for you guys as well so the what what i've noticed a lot of people are having a problem with is it's they're spinning out really quick so one thing I found to help, you know, practice with that is to just do, instead of worrying about transitioning first, worry about just actually getting into it and getting the uh, the wheel countered and throttle control. So this is basically built on 4 horsepower, so for the purpose that you're almost going to be able to stay at full throttle for most of this, we're going to get our wheel cam turned down. We are on our Logitech G920. We are on full 900 or 870 degrees of rotation. We are do have a handbrake. We're going to be using it a little bit today as well. But, so basically, first and easiest thing I found to do, other than bog your car in second gear, I don't always start in second, but is to pretty much just go slow, about 25 miles an hour to this post, clutch kick it, and throw the car, and get used to how much you're going to have to counter steer. So pretty much the way, you can pretty much throw the wheel and catch it like I just did, and it will be pretty much right where you need it to be. And if you can do that, then you can pretty much be able to hold a drift. So one of the biggest things that people are not doing is they're not counter steering enough. So I'm counter steering a lot. So, but what I notice a lot of people are doing is they're going like this, too much power, not counter steering fast enough, just like that. And they're spitting out. You have to anticipate the motion of the car and what the car is going to do and counter steer accordingly, just like that. You have to be able to kind of anticipate where the car is going to go but with the wheel settings the car has somewhat of a little bit of a self steer this 3 uh, 350z actually has pretty much a good amount of self steer the way it's set up and the way i have my wheel settings so you can pretty much go and it'll if you notice i really didn't touch it it kind of just uh counter steered itself in a sense so if you get it right and you're smooth on your throttle you can almost let go of the wheel and kind of let it do its thing and then there's other times where if you give too much throttle like that it'll rotate a little bit more so the easiest thing to do i found got somebody creeping up here is pretty much just start doing circles find yourself a spot like this give it throttle and just try and keep yourself in a nice basically drift circle because it'll get you the idea of how much power you can give the car and how much you're gonna have to change your steering angle and then once you do that you'll be able to throw it in transitions but so 
like the biggest thing I think people is don't get frustrated with your wheels. If you're just starting on a wheel, don't like, oh god, I can't drift and like get rid of the wheel and stop. It's the worst thing to do is actually to uh, get frustrated with the wheels. So clutch kicking is probably the easiest way to learn how to uh, get the angle of rotation because the car's not going to kick around as fast. Just like that. It kicks around pretty easily on a clutch kick compared to if you were going to throw it in with a handbrake. Then you have to you know, anticipate it a lot sooner like that. And then once you're able to get, basically you can get yourself into a circle and kind of flutter the throttle a little bit, get your steering angle and feel pretty comfortable with it is then when you can let off the gas, transition the car back the other way and get back on it. So another thing that I notice people doing, especially on transition, they'll try and just stay full throttle and it'll do that. You kind of, when you're transitioning, if you're not using your e-brake, it helps to uh, kind of get off and get back on real quick because it uh, changes the, uh, you know, the weight of the car. So you can pretty much just feather throttle, go this way, let off the gas, transition it, get back on the gas, and you can do a very smooth, easy transition. So, like I said, biggest thing, don't get frustrated. Just, you know, kind of keep with it. Do, do circles and do as many circles as you can because it, it gives you the idea of uh, being able to know when you're giving too much throttle like that when you're not giving enough throttle. Because if you're not giving enough throttle, the car's going to start gripping up on you and then you're going to uh, straighten up. So if I were to kick this in, not give enough throttle, it's just going to go straight and then it's going to do that. If I give it too much throttle when I don't need it to, it's going to do that and it's just going to completely lose it. So you kind of have to be uh, conscious of how much throttle. That w that's why doing these, uh, essentially doing little circles. I'm gonna transition this way. Doing little circles kind of gives you that feel of, you can mess around with, see right now I'm full throttle. I'm easing off a little bit because I know, don't want to go too wide, but I know what I can do when steering it. But I can mess around with what happens if I do this, what happens if I do that. I can see how the car reacts. So once you know how the car reacts, then you can pretty much just be able to kick it in, run your nice lines, and be able to get off the gas, use the brake, transition. You don't even really have to use a handbrake because if you use the weight of the car and just tap the brakes a little bit and just get off the feather of the gas, you can actually transition pretty much without an e-brake. Um, now there's certain times where like, if you're going at a high rate of speed, the clutch kicking is not really going to uh, get you sideways enough and that's where the handbrake comes into play or you can you know upset the weight of the car one way hit the brakes and upset it back the other way you know do a faint initiation but like if you're just first starting out on a wheel don't get frustrated with it it does take a little bit of time to get used to especially in this game it took me a few to get used to the physics um the car also makes a big big impact on how the wheel reacts so like i said this is a 400 horsepower 350z Y body kit, uh, stock tires, um, stock pretty much a lot. So as for the tuning of it, we are running about 28 pounds and 28 and a half in the front, 26 in the rear. Gearing is stock transmission. We do have a clutch and, an L and a uh, two-stage um, rear diff. As for alignments, we're running three degrees of camber in the front, one degree in the rear, one degree of toe, um, 0.5 and seven in caster. Any roll bars, we're not running any, we're on the stocks. And as for spring rates, we I left the spring rates all the same. All I did was bump the front up by one. Now that's so that when you hit the brakes or you're in transition, it'll actually dive the nose of the car and it'll, it helps with the weight transfer. So then you also have rebound and stuff, which are all the same. Arrow, we do have front arrow, but I left it. Braking, I did turn down braking force 50% for... The ability to stay on the brakes and throttle at the same time and not lose angle it's more of a tandem brake um, but it's also good for if you're sliding you could slow yourself down without like stopping the drift or like rotating you too much and then of course the diff is a 175 it's just settings i found work nicely for me especially on transition with the deceleration so we're gonna leave those so back to basically what we were here today. So, like I said, the biggest thing is just knowing what the car is going to do before it does it. 
So if you if you can figure out what the car is going to do before it does it, because you put the car to do it, you're going to be fine. A little clutch kick, a little throw, a flick of the wheel, and we're there. So, and then I can stay there, got off throttle, lost angle, stay more throttle, more angle, feather off throttle, straighten up. The other thing is, if you want to come out of a drift, you know, sometimes getting off the gas immediately is not always the best because the car could oscillate one way or another. Yes, getting off the gas right away is good too because it could help, but what I found, if you want to come out, ease yourself off the gas, not fully completely, just like slowly ease yourself off throttle and you'll be able to come out of it without snapping back the other way because if you're still on throttle, you're gonna snap back and that's the biggest thing when it comes to transitioning. So, kicking it in this way, transitioning, you kinda can't just stay on the gas. And that's why when people transition to the handbrake, the the reason it works so easily is because you gotta push the clutch when you pull the handbrake. You're actually, you know, slowing down the wheel rotation with the handbrake, but you're also stopping and getting that blip of throttle to help transition the car the other way. So with a transition, it's pretty much you kinda gotta just feather like full throttle, full throttle, feather off. Get back on, tap the brakes a little bit to change the weight of the car, and flick it back in. So, the biggest thing I can say to help people for if you're just learning how to get sideways on a wheel, especially in here, come to a place like this or any other place in the airport and just get yourself into a drift donut. I know it may seem remedial and it may seem very, you know, amateur to do a drift donut, but the thing is. That drift donut is the basics of everything that drifting is. It's learning throttle control. It's learning steering control. It's learning everything that you need to be able to put together, say, a perfect line in a street situation. So we're going to see if we can't uh, rip this in here and see if we can't do some transitions and just throw this car around a little bit and see if we can't have a little fun with it. You break in throw it in really hard short kick it back this way use the brakes to transition there we go I wanted to try to run that whole thing but I couldn't so this thing is too wide to run the long straight so you can run some really nice figure eights in this place so you can learn to transition and you can learn about throttle transitioning handbrake transitioning however you, however you want to transition Handbrake right that way. I'm gonna handbrake that way and kick it back with the wheel. But it's all about knowing how much throttle and how much steering input you need to put for the car. So a good setup car and a car that you stay with and you stick with for a long time helps out because you become familiar with the car and you become familiar with how the car reacts to how much throttle and play. So then, so when you come to, when you're not in a situation where you're like on a set small area where you know the turn you can gauge the turn and you can pretty much just go I know what's gonna happen right here I know how much I gotta give the car I know how much steering I gotta go and you can throw yourself a nice little line down the street so it's really all about knowing how much throttle and steering input so doing the drift donuts I can't stress enough is a very good way to learn that and uh, figure out what you need to do and how much you can give the car because then you can just do that and just know how much you gotta get the car, pull the handbrakes and you know know what you're doing. But that's where I started off when I started figuring this game out when I was trying to get wheel settings. I pretty much just found myself in the donut section at the festival area, just doing some donuts and figuring it all out. Oof, so I was gonna overshoot that. So that's how I figured it out. I just was doing the donuts, figuring out how much throttle the cars can get, how much reaction the car got when I did certain things and that's how I was able to do what I was doing in the game. So this 350Z handles really well. It's actually a fun little car and I'm probably gonna keep using this car for a while. So I hope this helps a lot of you guys out with uh, basically a little glimpse into it. I need that. Oh, did I miss that? Get wrecked. Into, you know, a little, little help, you know, to, uh, kind of get used to the wheel and how it reacts so a lot of people get frustrated where they'll just try and throw themselves into a drift turn or 
sit into those hairpins up in the mountains by the uh, by the festival, which we'll head to just so we can rip this car. They'll uh, they'll throw themselves into those and they they don't understand how much steering input they should be giving, and they're like, "Oh man, I can't drift. I keep spinning out." Because they're not used to how much input they need. Drifting on a like on a mountain road or something where you don't know a set takes a little time and a little practice. But once you know the basics of car control and how much throttle input and how much steering input you can do, then you'll be able to do whatever you really feel like doing. That's why I know it seems probably remedial and a lot of people are gonna be like, oh that's stupid. I you know don't knock it till you try it. Give it a shot, you know, see if it helps out, because you may be surprised at doing a couple donuts and then switching into figure eights, how quickly you are able to do all that without, you know, spinning out. So we're gonna throw this in here. And that a little wider than I wanted to. And I did not have enough power because I forgot to clutch kick the car. There we go. A little more clutch kicks. Keeps the power going. So like I said, this thing handles so nice. Uh, I think I'm going to throw a lot more power into this car for myself. But it's a good basic if you put the car around 400 horsepower with a diff and uh, uh, drift suspension. So I will leave this tune up if you guys want to give it a shot for basically just a, you know, a beginning drift car. It's a very stable beginning drift car. Uh, so not too overpowered, but it still has power. Because another thing is, you don't want to start off with a car that has a thousand horsepower or so much power that you know you just spin out. If you can learn on a lower horsepower car, it's easier because you can pretty much stay full throttle and drift your turns. Whereas on a higher horsepower car, you really have to uh, be able to uh, modulate your throttle. Like this is a flat out turn. That was just full flat out, no lifts, fourth gear, just flat through the turn. So start off with a lower horsepower car. Don't start off with an FD car. Don't start off with something that has, you know, 900 some horsepower because once you can drift on the lower horsepower cars, you understand throttle control to the defense of, you understand how much throttle you need. So then you can start modulating your throttle in other aspects. And uh, then you'll be able to start really drifting the way you want to so i hope this guys helps you guys a little bit i think i'm gonna do this live for the thon so as always you guys know follow me on facebook twitch twitter instagram all that's found in the description box okay, below Andrew. if you guys Setting have any other questions please let me know down now. in the comment section down below if you guys tried this and you think it helped out please let me know because you know if you guys are enjoying these little tutorials on drifting with these cars and stuff i'll continue to you know bring more tutorials of the channel you know getting a little more into like like runs or certain things so like let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you guys feel about this. I do enjoy helping everybody out as much as I can. I feel like I need my Kona Zeg or something very powerful for this Forzathon. So, as always, I like thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below what you guys think of this. And, ooh, never mind. I will take my uh, Gales Boost of Vendador. So, as always, I thank you guys for watching. And until next time, I'm Evil Rabbit. I'll see you guys on the next one.